here and then I'm going to move over there because I feel better sitting down and standing up and I don't like to stand behind the podium. But it is great to be here today and I'm in Majority Leader Hoyer's district and I'll be speaking tomorrow with leaders uh, in Washington about the issues we're talking about with you today. Now, the, I, I'm in Washington, it seems like, every week and it's, uh, we're very close to getting something done. So it's, uh, um, Congressman Hoyer is one of the leaders, of course, in, uh, that, that I'll be talking to. And I'm glad I'm here. Sorry he's not here, but I know he's in session. I like to sit down instead of stand up because I work out <laughs> And I did lunges. Yes. I want to talk to you about a serious subject today, uh, and it's hard to talk about something very serious when you can't, you're not in a crisis or you're not in the middle of a disaster. Everybody understands, you know, uh, something blowing up in your face. And here, this is going to happen. It is, we are going to experience what I'm going to tell you about. Uh, this was a kind of an assignment that I got, I guess, just because uh, I think I'm a good American. It doesn't have anything to do with politics. Uh, it's a nonpartisan issue. And uh, the way it came about is over many years, I'm a geologist and I've been in the oil business since 1951 when I got out of school. And I, going forward from that point, it seems like it's been 100 years, but not quite, but, you know, well, 50 years. And what I saw uh, in leadership in, in Washington about, uh, about energy uh, was very clear to me that he did not understand. And let me take you back to Richard Nixon in 1970. He gave a speech, and he said, by the end of this decade, the 70s, we will not be importing any oil. Uh, at the point he said that, we were importing 24% of our oil, and at the end of the decade, it was 28%. And I started to become aware that the media, uh, the press in particular, never pinned one of these politicians down and said, you told us we would not be importing any oil by the end of the 70s. Nobody ever asked the question. From that point forward, every candidate both Democrat and Republican, would stand up in front of an audience and say, elect me and we'll be energy independent, as if it was just going to be something that would happen on their being elected. Nobody ever asked them. But what did the current do? It went just like this, straight up. And by the time we got to 1991, we were importing 52% of our oil, and you still had these candidates saying, we'll be energy independent if you elect me. In the mid-90s, I started making speeches and saying, we're going to be 60% by the end of the 90s. By 2000, we will be importing 60% of our oil. That was right. I was correct on it. And now, we're 67% import. Okay, 40 years, nothing, no plan. We've had no plan, no energy plan. <clears throat> Your question, I know to me, is, is why have we not had an energy plan? Because we had cheap oil. Cheap oil, and you know, it's, it's almost like uh, we won't say anything about it. We'll just continue to take this cheap oil, and everything will be okay. It's not going to be okay. It is not going to be okay. So, last year when I launched on uh, July the 8th, 08, with the Pickens plant, that we had uh, at that morning when I went down to uh, the press club to announce the plan, uh, the the price of gasoline was four dollars and eleven cents at the Exxon station, and people were outraged by the price. It's interesting now because that price has dropped to two dollars or whatever, and people say, "Well, it's not anything to worry about. You're still importing exactly the same amount of oil today as you did last year. It's just at half price." What does it mean? The security issue is the same. The security issue for America is the same. Just the pain isn't as uh, acute as it was a year ago. 
Does it mean we don't have a problem? Absolutely not. You've got exactly the same problem you had before. But at least it's not as expensive for it today as it was a year ago. Will we go back to $4? Of course you go back to $4. Let's go back and look at the fourth quarter of 08. What did you have in the fourth quarter? You had projections for, uh, uh, for uh, oil. See, there's 85 million barrels a day in the world. And that is, I believe, is peak oil. You have capped at 85 million. You can't get any more than that out of the system. And that declines at 7% a year. Now, but we stay at 85. How do we do it? By drilling wells around over the world, adding production, but you can't get it above 85. It's, we haven't, the world uh, has not been able to accomplish anything above 85 million barrels. So last, last year, toward quarter, they projected 87 million barrels would be the demand. Well, anybody can see 85 will not cover 87, so what's going to happen? The price is going to have to go up and kill demand. And so everybody ran in and bought oil. Then you, it was a coincidence, but we had a collapse of the global economy at that point, and then demand did drop off to 83 million barrels, and the price fell to $35. Uh, it was kind of the way it went. If you were in the business like I am, I could see all of these things happening. Somebody that didn't follow it as closely as I did said, oh, well, everything's fixed, and it's uh, gone off. What's going to happen is when, you, when the economy global economy recovers, you'll go back to above 85 million barrels. For instance, next year it's projected 86.4 million barrels a day will be the requirement for the world to, uh, for oil. The only way you can, you can deliver on that is you've got the price has to go up and that'll kill demand and you'll fit into the 85. But we can't continue like this. This country cannot continue like this. Now, I, I can get to the finish line at my age, with my standard of living remaining the same. But you can't, Steve, you can't get to the finish line. You're going to have to come to grips with the problem. All of you are. And I look at it for my grandchildren, my granddaughter sitting right there, and I don't worry so much about uh, my daughter and my son-in-law over here. They're old enough that they, they, they may be able to make it to the finish line too, I'm not sure. But she can, and you all can't either. You're going to have to address this problem. You can't sidestep it. It's not anything to do with politics. So we can't say, well, the Republicans this or the Democrats that or something else. This is America. This is all of us together. And I think that our president is going to be able to make this speech when we get through the health care issue and go to energy. I think he will say, and it's a wonderful time to after the bloody battle for health care is to bring the country together and say this is all of us together to solve a problem that must be solved because it's a security issue for the country. But here you are, you can't increase oil production. We are in, we're importing 13 million barrels a day is what we do in the United States. We're using 20 million barrels. So we're using 25% of all the oil produced in the world every day with 4% of the population. Well, that's not sustainable. I mean, that, it, it, you may say, well, I, I don't like it. We're more highly industrialized than anybody else is. The rest of the world doesn't give a damn. They really don't care whether you're highly industrialized or what. They can see you using 25% of all the oil with 4% of the population, and you're not popular. You know we're not popular around the world. Our, our credibility has, has suffered in the last 10 years, dramatically suffered. And you know, you say, why? One of the reasons that it suffers, and I think one of, it may be the number one reason, is the fact that we rely on countries that are not friendly to us for our supply of oil. We're, we get five million barrels a day from OPEC, and I don't consider that to be uh, friendly oil to the United States. And I don't think other people do either. I, uh, uh, I you know, I, I'm going to get off on wind in just a second. But uh, I, some people from Ireland came to see me about wind, and we talked for an hour about wind and a project that they wanted to do and wanted me to look at doing it with them. And when we got through, 
with me and said, we would like to talk a little bit about uh, your Pickens plan. And I said, how do you know about that? And they said, we follow everything on energy that happens in America. And what you're doing is most unusual. And I said, what, how do you see what I'm doing? They said, well, you're trying to get off the foreign oil. And I said, that's right. I mean, we can't get off the oil from Canada and Mexico. We have friendly places we get oil from. But we need to cut down on the unfriendly segment of our imports. And we can do it. And I'll give you the solution in just a second. 